much I even love handmade crafts made of macaroni Come on now, you should know me Sometimes I might eat too much No worry about my weight, got the dad bod rocking on me Sketches on my feet, cargo shorts look good on me I'm a dad, that's what I do Welcome back to Home Dad Chat. I am one of your dads on the mic. My name is Brock Lush, and with me tonight, I have my other good friend. This is Danny Mercer. And uh, Danny and I, we are uh, coming off a, just a long day. You can probably hear it in our voice a little bit, a little, little tired or whatever. And anybody listening to this uh, that's a dad or a, even a stay-at-home parent, you, you completely understand <laughs> what it's like. But we're going to have a good time tonight. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to have some fun talking about Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 a different time and uh but we you know we want to we want to share a little bit about what we're doing for thanksgiving uh we're also going to share uh some of the things that uh some of the guys within the national at home dad facebook close page uh shared with us about what they're doing uh for thanksgiving as well but um before we get into that i I just want to thank everybody who's uh been listening to the episodes uh it's been really neat to see the different comments and uh different pieces of encouragement that have been coming forth. And uh, so I just wanted to give everybody just a, a quick thank you for that. Uh, it's been really cool. Um, Danny, how's the, how was your day today? <laughs> you know, it was long. It was. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely one of those things you get up in the morning and you just think, okay, I can do this. Everything's good. I'm good. And then by, by maybe lunch or at dinner, if you're really in good shape, maybe you're just worn out. It's been the, uh, the, the laundry journey today has been especially difficult for us. Um, and my, uh, my oldest had, uh, she's in uh, Future Farmers of America, so and that's cool. And you know, I, I'm not uh, a farmer, uh, but it's it's a good program. And she's looking to be a veterinarian, and she's doing all these things. And she said, "Dad, I'm going to be working with the goats this afternoon." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, no problem." Well, she wore her tennis shoes into the goat pen, which is a, a big uh, runoff area with grass around it. That's it's a huge area, and she's covered in mud. And it's not regular mud. It's that stinky farm mud, which oh, I, yeah. I'm very familiar with. You know, you maybe too. And she brings her shoes in in a bag and she's got her, like, she's in her bare feet and she gets in the van and I'm like, whoa, what, what is that? And she's like, yeah, I got my, um, yeah, my shoes are uh, kind of dirty. And I'm like, ah. so uh, we spent the afternoon basically brushing those off, spraying them off. And then I ran them through a, actually a gentle cycle in the, uh, the washing machine. Um, cause they're older shoes. So even if they wrecked them, it wouldn't be bad, but, oh, it was just, and, and my wife comes in at some point and she's like, wow, you're, you're just really good at this laundry stuff. <laughs> like, don't, that's not a compliment. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like, this is not the compliment I want no, right now. No, this is not where I want to excel. <laughs> Yeah, no, but other I, than that, it's been good. How about well, you? That's good. Uh, it's been it's been good in ways and long in others. Um, yeah, I, we were talking a little bit before we actually hit record on this day or on this episode, and you know, just dealing with a seven year old and and all the things that come with that, and uh, like just you know, it he's he's a different kid than he was a year ago, and I think I'm just trying to grasp that a little bit and so that along with the pandemic it's just there's so many different things that are going on and you know it's one of those deals where it's like I think you have that like oh he's a sweet boy and it's like all right and he's growing up and it's like he's still my sweet boy but at the same time like (laughs) man he's so challenging and (laughs) that's a great word challenging (laughs) yeah you know and it's even worse when you talk to my you know talk to my mom about it she's like oh you were the same way and I'm like Mm. thanks mom appreciate that but you know it but I guess that gives me the appreciation to know like if, if that's the case like I mean, I know how I turned out, minus a few little details of decisions I've made in my life. But uh, if, if he gets to where I am right now, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be happy with that. How that yeah, turns at least out. if he's, he's closer than where he is now, then yeah. that's that's a good that's progress right there. Definitely, definitely. Well, and I think too, like he's growing up differently than I than I did in some ways. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, not that not that my childhood was bad in any kind of way, but I feel like he's got so much more opportunity, and he's he's way more cultured than I was at seven. So that's um, right. So I think those kind of things will bode well for him as he gets older. But yeah, I mean, it was, it was a long day. Um, I, I can definitely say like laundry was one of the, the things on my list today. Um, definitely did that. And uh, I, I cooked uh, dinner tonight and uh, cleaned that up. My wife had to actually go to work and pick up her stuff from the office because the office said, we're not going to open back up. So come get all your personal effects. And oh, wow. uh, 
and kind of go there. So she had a little bit of a, a bittersweet moment having to go to the office and she said it was really eerie walking in, but got her yeah. stuff and got out and yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, like it's been a weird week. It was a weird mm-hmm. week last week too for me, but I was, I was feeling pretty sick. Uh, I, I got actually, I got to feeling really bad at the, after we did the last episode. Um, and so oh, was it like, my breath? I, you know what? I'm really glad it wasn't. <laughs> no, I, I, I went in for my annual checkup and I got mm-hmm. a flu shot and that flu shot just really messed me up. And I, I so, remember you mentioning that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so th- it was, it was rough. And, uh, you know, at one point I actually spiked a fever, um, which kind of tripped me out a little bit, but I think it was a combination of like dehydration and, and like a sinus infection. Cause I mean, it went away yeah. pretty quickly and I haven't felt anything since I've got this really froggy throat i could probably sing you a really good uh johnny cash song right now but uh <laughs> we, we won't do that i promise i'll save you <laughs> we want to keep listeners that's right we want to keep <laughs> so but anyway um yeah so one of the things that's been talked around the house and i think probably your house too has got to be the upcoming you know wonderful thanksgiving and Getting just ready, all that yeah. comes with it yeah and uh you know, like I said, we, we went on to uh, the National At Home Dad closed page, uh, announced that we were going to be doing this episode and just wanted to get guys uh, to sort of chime in about what they were doing. Um, I don't know. If, do you have the Facebook page pulled up at all? I, I do. And I want to I wanna okay. find, I want to know how you as the master podcaster you are, and we all know that, you're going to get a picture of Matt Strange Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, I can pull that up. Oh, I mean, yeah. give it to uh, give it I, to the podcast because it is man. Yeah. Now, anybody that doesn't know Matt Strain is a chef. I, you know, he always says before I started this back in the day, but he's still <laughs> there's he's still doing it. He may he may not really be able to claim it in his eyes, but yeah, man, that guy knows how to cook. Yeah, and so I can't. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no. So yeah, so he posted um, a picture of it's what is it here? He's got it's a it's a turkey breast. Uh, rule lord i don't know how to say that word <laughs> i was hoping you would because i didn't either i haven't i don't know that word. i don't know he'll he'll tell me later i'm sure yeah. um but it's this amazing turkey breast that he's filled with sage and dried cherries and pomegranate p- pips and uh like cream cheese and he's wrapped it in bacon and it just looks unbelievably amazing like yeah it, it's exactly what you would expect from matt strain when it comes to meat right um, yes you know, and so actually I, I ended up getting the recipe for it from him too. Oh, so, good, good. Yeah. So that, and it's actually down here in the thread, which is pretty neat. Oh, I see it. Yeah. And it's not hard to make. That's the oh, part that's great about it. It's it, super it easy. Really easy. I mean, it really, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't, I'm not going to try it for Thanksgiving, but he mentioned it, that it was so good. He was going to have it again for Christmas. And I'm like, I might be able to fit one in there between uh, mm-hmm. Thanksgiving and Christmas. I, I showed it to my wife. I sent a picture and she was like, you know, we were talking about just doing steak, but uh, I like this idea better. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, maybe. Um, but, and that kind of brings me to the first point here. Like, um, so we, we got this in here with Matt, but um, first off, like, do you, do your, does your family have like a, a set, like, entree that they uh lean towards like are you a turkey family or we're we're definitely a turkey family okay we've um we've had uh, varying amounts of turkey but we always have at least one and i generally end up making two um if the kids are going to school and the wife is going to work then i want enough for leftovers basically so yeah, I usually have at least one turkey. How are you doing your turkeys? Are you just doing them in the oven or do you uh, got a special thing you do? Alton Brown. Now I used to fry them. All right. And I love frying turkey, but the, uh, the, the oil is expensive and I really, I just can't, I can't do it. Uh, this year I can't, no, I should say we probably have the money and the budget, but I'm like, you know, I could get two turkeys and not buy the oil and just put them in the oven. So, but Alton brand Brown has this recipe. Now he brines it first, which I think all, you know, every, every good cook probably knows about brining, but he brines it in. And I'm going to, I'm going to read this cause I don't ever remember, but it's uh, vegetable stock, uh, brown sugar, peppercorns, allspice and candied ginger. Oh, all wow. Right? That sounds delicious. So, yeah. You brine it overnight and it gets, it soaks up all that flavor. And then uh, you put uh, like apples and onions and cinnamon stick and kind of uh, like uh, boil them all together and then pour them into it. And then you bake it on a very high temperature. I do mine at about 500 on my oven, but only for 30 minutes. And you get that brown skin immediately. 
and then you leave it in the oven up until it reaches 160 internal. And it's 160 ish. I think, honestly, I think Matt would say, uh, if we go back to Matt's training again, I think he goes 155, if I remember from his chicken. Uh, uh, yeah, 155, because when you pull it out, yeah. it's going to cook some more and the temperature is yep. going to rise. So, yeah, 155 yeah, so sounds about right. Because 165 is uh, usually what poultry needs to be at for its, mm -hmm. its hot temp. So, yeah. And doing it like that, I have to say, every year, one, it's easy. I don't have to baste it, I don't have to open the oven again. Um, once I, you know, once you basically brown the skin, I can leave it in there for the time needed for it to heat up. And that meat is juicy and delicious. And the skin is nice and crisp and it's not burnt in any way. Um, and that's, that's, I think that's the way I'll probably be making a turkey for the rest of my life. That's awesome. We should have probably like started off with a little disclaimer saying we're going to make you hungry by the end of this episode. <laughs> we're going to try. And if you're, and if you're intermittent fasting right now, well, I apologize, oh, but at the I same time, <laughs> just bear with it. It's worth I guess, it. I guess I'll make sure that it gets put in the post. Like, Hey, just disclaimer, <laughs> this episode will make you hungry. <laughs> oh man. Well, that, that, that Turkey sounds delicious. And, uh, I, uh, yeah, my, my family is not a, like, we're not big on turkey. Um, mm -hmm. Not as much. I think it's just my kids. Like, um, they're not real big on it. I, turs, me, give me a turkey leg. I'm, I'm as happy as a hillbilly out in the hay. But, um, yeah, yeah. but otherwise, like, I can't get them to, to really enjoy it the way I do. So um, I think it's the age. If, if, yeah, probably a big part of it. Cause I know my, my younger two kids, they're six and seven, and they will probably, They'll, they'll eat some of it and they'll like the turkey leg. They'll fight over, you know, who gets the, who gets the turkey legs. And there's two of them. They're still going to fight, but they're going to eat rolls probably. You know, that's where yeah. they're going to be. So oh, what kind of, cause it's Hawaiian King rolls. That's the only kind I don't oh, make yeah. them myself. I just love those <laughs> yep. a good bit of butter and just like, yeah, let's go to town. And that's what they'll do. But, but the older kids, since my, my older two are like 14 and 11 and they appreciate a bigger meal they appreciate more flavors now that they're older whereas you know young kids it's just like i mean they eat dirt what do they know they have no they have no understanding of what real food is so um i could see not having a turkey if my kids were both uh you know if we were seven and four is that what yours are seven and five 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 okay yeah. all right yeah if a turkey was if it was if it was shaped like a, it was uh well sorry so if turkey was sushi they would eat it all day. <laughs> nice. That's they love they love eating sushi rolls and all that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. but yeah, so yeah, no turkey here. But um uh, we, we had actually thought about doing at first it was gonna be like, all right, like, you know, what what do you want to eat? Because I mean, we're not going to my folks' place. Uh we're just hanging here at the house, um, which we've done in the past. Like, um, we've tried to make our own traditions over the years just because like, hey, this is our family, like we're not mm -hmm. gonna travel, like my, my family lives three hours north of here. Um, my in-laws live like eight hours west of here. So it's a bit of a truck to get to either place really. And uh, so we just have had years where we're like, we're not going anywhere. Um, but yeah, this year we were like, oh, yeah. I really want a steak. I think that's what I want for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and nice. so I was like, all right, like I'm going to get a nice ribeye. She wanted a filet mignon. Um, the kids were throwing out all kinds of stuff that they wanted. Their big thing is they, they wanted like shrimp cocktail. Like they'll, they'll eat shrimp cocktail all day long. It's one of their that's favorite awesome. things. So that was kind of where we were going. Just like, all right, we, we can just make this fun and have little foods here and there. And so that that's kind of where we are with, when for for this year basically um i was gonna say i was gonna get in here to where these guys are talking about some stuff gotta go back to look at the turkey or the turkey breast again unfortunately yeah <laughs> breast roulade yeah. roulade whatever it is it looks good though so uh it looks like brian frampton he's all about preparing a smoked turkey that sounds really yummy as well my boy josh josh gumbert yeah frying turkey Brian yeah, turkey yep yeah. a lot he of turkey it's guys it's, it's right up he's like it's delicious and also dangerous and <laughs> like it is yeah. it really is if you're not careful you could definitely burn your house down but it's so good I think a fried turkey uh, is is my second favorite and the only reason I wouldn't have it is first is because of the expense of the oil and I really don't you know I don't see that it's worth it just for one turkey maybe if I was making several now have you ever had wild turkey like actually mm -hmm. shot off on the farm kind of, or yeah. out on the field where you had to pick the bird shot out of it when you ate it yeah it's so good mm -hmm. i i yeah. highly anybody who's never had wild turkey 
Like you need to find some, you need to find a hunter friend first off um, and, and get yourself some wild turkey because it's like all dark meat, basically. That's a, that's the thing. Like it's not your, mm-hmm. your typical butterball where everything's, it's all white meat kind of deal. Um, and it's just so much more flavorful. It's mm-hmm. so good. My, so my wife's grandfather uh, was a big time hunter. And whenever we'd go out to their, out to her folks place, there were always two turkeys at the house. There was the butterball and then there was the, the field turkey. Yeah. <laughs> so I never went for the butterball because I was like, man, like this is my only time I ever am going to get field turkey. Like this is so right. good. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so what do you eat with it though? Cause I've got a couple of different sides that I think uh, this year that I've, I've decided are going to be it. So what are your, if you were going to have a turkey or when you had it in the past, what were your favorite side dishes? Side dishes for me. So I'm a green bean casserole guy. Oh yeah. Love green bean casserole. My wife thinks that that's the grossest thing ever. Um, (laughs) She, she's not a big, she's just not a fan of the whole like cream of mushroom soup type of thing in it. And I love mushrooms. Um, and that's, so it's a texture issue. Um, so green bean casserole, um, I'm a, a smashed potatoes and gravy guy. uh, Yeah. Um, and probably just a nice butter roll. Um, my, my aunt, my, my, um, my dad's, um, sister makes these amazing uh butter rolls that are like the size of your face they're so good. <laughs> it's like a loaf of bread and each person gets their own loaf i love it yeah i, love it. I mean she's just like here's a handful of dough <laughs> down on the thing <laughs> like goes into the oven and comes out and it's like everybody gets a loaf she's like the oprah of the family <laughs> you get a loaf and you, you get, get a loaf, loaf. Nice. um but it, it's just buttery i mean it's it's like you know you know how that texture is on a hawaiian mm-hmm. on oh, yeah. hawaiian bread it's the same thing like you did, it's just flaky and buttery and delicious yeah. so but that, that's pretty much uh my go-to's I, I was not a cranberry i'm not a cranberry sauce guy just mm-hmm. that is what about not stuff appeal. Did you ever guy did you ever get dressing or stuffing that you you know those two things it's hit or miss on me every year and i've had well, different agree, and i've had yeah. different styles it's like i've had the oyster um the oyster dressing and then i've Never had known. yeah that one's that one's weird like i had that once at a friend's house and i was like i'm gonna eat this but i don't know and I, at the end of it i was like live. i was like it's good but I don't think I'll be eating that again, <laughs> but yeah, it just depends. Like, I think that one's just got to hit me in the right mood. I, it's not my, mm-hmm. it's not one of my go-tos. What about you? I think the the first thing I'm going to have, honestly, is a big salad and I'm going to have it to eat while I'm cooking. Um, and it sounds kind of weird, but I really, I love salads, but I have this salad that I make with um, uh, like romaine and either kale or spinach or sometimes both. Um, but then I put in cashews and raspberries and blackberries and feta cheese. And then I've got this lemon poppy seed dressing that I make uh, at home and it's just perfect. It's just like the salad that I want to eat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be eating that all day long. So there's not going to be anybody uh, by probably a late lunch, probably for the Turkey. Um, Definitely doing Mac and cheese because my wife loves it. She likes uh, Alton Brown's again. Alton Brown is my favorite cook, I think, but his recipe for uh, Mac and cheese where he makes this roux out of sweetened condensed milk and spice, hot, hot, hot sauce, basically okay. um, mixes it up and puts it all in there with just a lot of cheddar cheese. So it's got a, a little bit of a burn to it and then a little bit of a sweet and then all that cheese, of course, which my wife loves cheese. So um and then probably going to do ma- uh, mashed potatoes without gravy because the kids aren't really great on gravy. And I just kind of, it's, it's not worth it for me. Um, I do have a dressing and I didn't, I didn't really ever like dressing. Um, and it's been something that I've just kind of, like you said, it's hit or miss, you know, that was good. This was awful. And I mean, it's just, there's no, no consistency, but one of the other dads gave me his secret family recipe and it's this, amazing i'm gonna just kind of broad brush it because i don't want to reveal everything that's in it uh without his permission really but it's it's cranberries and pecans and just all of this flavor and it's a nice warm dressing that you make in the oven um preference you know how how long you want to have it in there what have you but it doesn't get really dry because of all the cranberries and everything in it Mm. and it's even my little kids love it um and that's really if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have stuffing. I think I wouldn't have any dressing like that at all. Um, that you sounds delicious. No cranberries. So no cranberries here either. Pumpkin pie. Um, 
oh, pumpkin yeah. or, or sweet well, potato pie. So we hadn't got. So. We were just talking about sides. We're not into dessert. Oh, we're not yet. Into, well, see, for me, for, for me, <laughs> I mean, buys the dessert. I'm sorry. I mean, okay. Yeah. I see. Now I see where we're going here. Yeah. <laughs> we're not talking about loading the whole plate up. You know, we're just, we're taking uh, this progressively. <laughs> all right. All right. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. But yeah. But I think that's going to be most of it uh, for mine. And the green beans. I'm not positive how I'm going to do them. But I. I love, and my kids, we all love green beans. And any, mm. I mean, even the canned ones, they're not great, but we'll still we'll eat them complete. You know, eat, there'll be nothing left. They'll eat them all. So I'm not sure how I want to do a casserole this year. I'm not sure if I want to do the cream of mushroom soup or if I just want to basically just have uh, green beans as a side, you know, mm. rather than like a casserole. But definitely having that as well, because I have to say with that much, with all that mac and cheese and the, and the rolls and the mashed potatoes and all that, I got to have some greens. It's just, uh, it's too heavy for me. Sure. Um, but, uh, but that's about it for us, I think. And okay. as we said, Hawaiian King rolls. Cool. Well, we're going to pause here about food for a second and talk a little bit about the structure of Thanksgiving itself for the families, because um, so we got some food in there. You guys are really hungry. We're going to pause for a second, a little intermission break, halftime show, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I thought it would be kind of interesting to look into what folks are planning to do for Christmas or for Thanksgiving this year, because um, it's, it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to feel a little bit different. We, we're all in just this very odd place of things. Um, there were a couple of guys who commented on this. Um, and I think this really just kind of bodes to just different people's ideas of what they want to do. So um, one of the guys stated, and I'm not going to use anybody's names in this just because I just want to kind of keep it amenable, mm -hmm. I guess would be the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one guy said that it's just their immediate family only. Um, this will be the first since they moved from one state to another um, back in like 2009. And so they're just it'll be they said i think it's from what it sounds like it's going to be weird for them to just be not going home for thanksgiving or christmas this year mm -hmm. um another uh another dad stated that they are going to be doing their first ever friendsgiving um and i've done that before those are actually a lot of fun um to just get some, you know a group of friends together they said all of our families like 600 miles away um or more and we've opted to not travel back for thanksgiving this year i don't blame them uh <laughs> just I wouldn't want to go through all the travel yeah. stuff. So they said on Saturday after um, Thanksgiving, um, three of their friends are coming over to enjoy a typical Thanksgiving dinner with them, um, bringing sides and desserts and just hanging out. And then he said that his anniversary, their anniversary falls on Thanksgiving this year. So um, they said they were just going to be having some fun after the kids uh, went to bed, which, Hey, I don't blame you one bit on that part. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy that time with the, enjoy that time with the, the, the spouse yeah, there. A couple for sure. of drinks, some music, a romantic dinner. Yeah. yeah. Just that moment too. And it's great too. They can do that uh, because of Thanksgiving being about gratitude and being grateful. I can't imagine anything in my life that I'm more grateful for um, than my wife and the relationship that we have and where we're at today Definitely. because of, of, our relationship. I mean, uh, it's a, you know, 100%, 100% kind of thing, of course. Um, and I do my part, but I really credit her for so much, um, that we've done and gone through together and that she's just been a rock, you know? So Thanksgiving, I think is a great, uh, and it being their anniversary, that's a yeah. fantastic opportunity. So I think, he's doing that. And I think too, just for anybody listening, like, you know, if, once you get the kids to bed and if it's you and your, your spouse, your partner, like take the time to like, just sit across from each other and talk about like what you're grateful for and, and connect that way. Like make, make that a special time for you. Like, you know, hopefully, hopefully your, you know, your, your spouse or partner doesn't have to go to work the next day. <laughs> um, and you know, you can just enjoy maybe just being up that little bit extra to, to connect like that. So um, I think it was, yeah, I think that's really cool that, that that's something that, uh, they're looking to do. Um, and then so what about you? What's your, um, what's your plan said? My plans. Well, I got one last one on here. I thought it was, really Oh, I'm sorry. Cool. No, no, it's okay. So one last one on here, this one's actually really cool. Their Thanksgiving tradition is, is that they said, um, their unusual Thanksgiving tradition that they've been doing every year since they were in college was, is that they do a Harry Potter marathon they start the very first movie either early morning yeah. or sometime the night before, and they just 
watch they let them play all day while they're cooking and prepping for thanksgiving that's um, awesome. and they said that their parents are going to be coming to share the holidays with them this year and so i thought that was really cool too i'm like that's neat yeah throw on a throw on a set of movies like why not mm-hmm. and just you know have them playing in the background and i mean the kids can sit and enjoy them or run out and it's no big deal because i'm pretty sure probably they you know it sounds like they've seen them multiple times so yeah yeah makes it that much fun uh, me particular so um we had to have the hard conversation with my folks um, about not coming for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that was, that was rough because my sister is actually flying in with uh, her new husband. Uh, They just got married last year and we just felt like, especially with the rise of everything, like it would be in our best interest safety wise to just stay here at the house um, and just, you know, we'll probably zoom with them and just connect that way. But it's sad. Like I, you know, I'd love to be able to go see my grandmother. Um, she's the only one that's not in a nursing home right now. I I got one grand, I got a grandfather in the nursing home and then she's not in the nursing home. And then I lost my grandfather at the beginning of this year. Um, and my grandmother the year before that. So, so it's kind of a, a lot of emotions wrapped up in there, but, um, yeah, we're just going to hang out here at the house and just enjoy, um, eating some food, probably watching some movies. I'm a big classic movie guy. Like I love movies. And so, you know, we'll probably watch mm-hmm. Home Alone 1 and 2, um, maybe a little National Lampoon Vacation. I don't know. Um, or National Lampoon You Christmas. said classics. That's not where I thought you were going. I'm just going to tell you. I thought you were like, you know, Casablanca. It's an amazing film because of this. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Home Alone 2. Rock. <laughs> no, no. I'm talking about, I'm an 80s kid. So, you know, gotcha, like. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So all that kind of stuff. Uh Elf will probably get watched because that's a favorite, Mm -hmm. you know, depending on how the mood strikes us, maybe we pull out the Christmas tree and actually put it up at that point. Um, Typically that usually the day after or somewhere around there is when we do that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's too. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, we'll probably play board games. Um, The kids have really gotten into that. We actually played Monopoly for the first time uh, and they really enjoyed that. Um, So ticket to ride Monopoly all that fun stuff. Just sit down, play some games, just enjoy mm-hmm. being around family. Um, that's, that's what we have planned. What about you? Nice. Nice. Um, you know, we've been staying home the last couple of years, uh, just been our family. And like last year I had one of my very good friends over. Um, and this year with everything else, we just don't feel uh, safe, I guess, going out to anybody else's house. So um, last couple of years we've done it uh, since my mom passed. It just kind of broke up the rhythm of everything else. And with having, you know, four kids and the fact that I want to cook everything. I mean, I really enjoy cooking. I want the turkey and, you know, and the mashed potatoes and that big old salad and just everything else. I'm going to make some kind of drink for the kids, you know, just something, and it could be something ridiculous, like a, like a, you know, a a seltzer water with, you know, orange dye in it to make you think of Thanksgiving for some reason or whatever, but something that's very special for them. And then a drink for my wife and I that might be, you know, alcoholic or not. Um, But just, I really love doing all that stuff. And you can't do that unless you're at home, really. I mean, not easily. So uh, we decided we're just going to, it's going to be easier for everybody. We'll just stay home and we're going to have a video chat, hopefully with um, uh, most of our extended family. We're down here in Georgia and like my wife's family's all in Minnesota. So we're going to get on a, a call of some co- some kind of video and uh, just have a zoom chat with them or something like that and just say happy Thanksgiving, but uh, really, really just staying close to home. And I think for us, we do uh, need that even though we're home a lot right now, we need, being at home to be a special thing for just a day we need a we need a a celebration you know thankfulness being grateful about things realizing how good we've got it uh especially with little kids and we talked about earlier about you know six and seven year old kids they think about themselves and that's it you know what do i how what do i do to get what i want um and that sort of thing that really you take just a few moments and help them understand what gratitude is and help kind of push them out of that envelope to hopefully grow into adults who at least consider, you know, being grateful about stuff. So I really want Thanksgiving this year to be about, okay, today we're going to decorate the house. Uh, We're going to, you know, put up whatever we want to put up, not Christmas decorations, but uh, put up like the little, uh, little pilgrim salt and pepper shaker, you know, and things like (laughs) that, just the goofy stuff that we've got. And um, just have that as this is that moment, this is that day, because we're grateful for each other, you know? 
So I'm hoping I can pull that off. I may just get terribly frustrated and go, okay, order Chinese food. I'm done with this. And we're going to just sit around and, and I'm going to yell at you because you spilled my <laughs> gravy all over the floor. So who knows? Um, but we're more than like football. Likely, <laughs> yeah, we're football and that's it. I don't want to talk. Um, but yeah, well, we're keeping it close to home. And as you mentioned on the Friday after is our day, we put up the Christmas tree kids are already planning that one they're ready to go the little kids know we have a train that is you know it's a cheap little plastic train but they love it like it's made of gold and uh, <laughs> so we're going to put that up around the tree and they're all planning about where it's going to be and how to keep the cats out of it and things like that so I think it's going to be a great day I'm really looking forward to it even though it's going to be a lot of work I think it's all going to be worthwhile yeah I think you know I think it's always going to be a lot of work but yeah it is kind of what it all comes yeah. down to so that it sounds like a lot of fun. So I'm sure that, if, you know, even if parts of it get pulled off, it'd be a good time for everybody, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, like drinks or whatever. And I, I've been to like different, different people do different things. It's really cool. Like some people will make like a pot of like mold wine or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think, or, I don't know, or is it mold? Yeah. Mold. mold. Yeah. Mold, mold wine or mold, mold. cider. Yeah, or Cider. Mm. we went to we went to one per, uh, friend's house a couple years ago. They were making like these amazing cocktails uh, mm -hmm. for everybody. Um, in my family, we have a a really old recipe. Well, I don't even know how old it is. Honestly, it's been around for a long time in my family. We, it's literally called slush. All right. Um, which is interesting because a lot of times I get called a lush because no one pronounces my name right because <laughs> it's pronounced loosh. I don't know what you're talking about, Brock Lush. I know, see? Uh, and uh, so it's called slush and it looks uh -huh. like slush. It, it really does. Um, t basically what you do is you take one of those like one gallon ice cream buckets okay. and you've, you're, um, oh gosh, I don't even know. It's like so many like things of um, that frozen concentrated orange juice mm -hmm. and um, some lemonade that's the same way like concentrate lemonade um, and then you brew like eight bags of like black tea okay. and and all this gets put into this uh, this bucket and then at the end you take a whole bottle of apricot brandy and dump it in there <laughs> yeah stir it all up and freeze it yeah and, and you and you freeze it and okay. uh and you know it, it it's it's solid i mean even though you put like an entire bottle of alcohol in there like it it takes a few days but it'll freeze um and then you scrape it out with like an ice cream scraper and you put it into a glass and then you pour like seven up or sprite on top of it and uh it's delicious <laughs> so it sounds good yeah, I expect to see that recipe in the show notes. I'm just yeah, <laughs> I'm not sharing that one. That's a family <laughs> one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's it's a good one though. Um, I just give you the brief of it all. But um, yeah, it's really tasty, and we made it. Uh, I think we made some of it a year or so ago. My parents came down for like Christmas or something, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Well, you got the drink." I'm like, "We made slush." And my dad's eyes lit up. He was like, "What?" I'm like, nice. yep, I got the recipe from grandma. We made it. And she, he's just like, oh, that's my gosh. awesome. So that was really cool. But um, yeah, so that'll be the one thing. We won't make it to like actually drink probably on Thanksgiving because it, it takes time. But we'll probably end up, if we get all the ingredients, making it like on Thanksgiving to have like throughout the month of December, basically. That's what my yeah. wife I was like, we're going to make two batches. This is going to last. Um, but yeah, so that's, so that's kind of our well, fun you're thing. Decorating the tree and drinking and. Singing Christmas songs, all that. I don't, yeah. I don't do eggnog, so <laughs> not, not especially not with a moose. I don't know, like the <laughs> the, the moose cup. <laughs> nice National Lampoon reference there for anybody yeah, yeah. that didn't know. Um, so yeah, so we've that's kind of what we've got so far for for Thanksgiving itself. I know you started talking about desserts, and so we'll get into that as well. Um, do you do anything special for um, breakfast for in the morning? Because like for me, like you've got like the, the Macy's day parade, but is there anything else? Like, does your family do anything? Well, I'm probably going to be serving about one to two. So no, um, I might make like, I will say something easy and this isn't going to sound as easy, uh, but like French toast is really easy. Yeah. Um, pancakes as well. I mean, in waffles, uh, it's something like that. It's not going to be anything um, too over the top, but we're definitely going to have something just on the table. And I'm thinking I'd like something where I can like 
put up a, a plate of, uh, you know, waffles or pancakes or something like that and just have it sealed up and then the kids can come when they wake up. Cause I'm not going to wake them up that day. Um, oh, let no. my teenager sleep as long as she wants, you know? Um, and then if they get up to watch the parade, that's fine. If they get up and can help in the kitchen, uh, all of them are learning, you know, to help cook. So, um, they all have their different tasks, but if they're not there to do it, of course, I, I think I can get it done <laughs> without them. Might go faster even. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, pancakes, uh, French toast, that's definitely easy and, and nice too. It's almost like it's, it's made to order. So as they mm-hmm. straggle out of bed, it's really easy to slap some of that down on a griddle and serve it up. And mm-hmm. so maybe your older ones will just do it for themselves. <laughs> Make it even easier for you. Um, I know my son, if you gave if I gave him the opportunity to at seven, he'd be like, yeah, I'm making pancakes. <laughs> Um, but they, my kids actually asked for um, a pineapple blueberry col- or crumble that my wife makes, which is really yummy. Um, pineapple blueberry, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. It's really good, like frozen blueberries, and throw some pineapples all together and mix it with like um, oatmeal mm-hmm. and some other, st- like, I forget what else she uses in it, brown sugar or whatever. It's delicious. I can get you the recipe for that one. <laughs> is it in a, like cooking in a pan or the crock pot or? or it's in a pan. I, yeah. Okay, all right. So it's done in a pan. So and it's, it's delicious. That one I'll get, that one I'll get recipe. I'll get a uh, show <laughs> notes. Re- <laughs> yeah. I'll give a show notes <laughs> recipe for that one. Cause that one's really good. I think she got that online or something, but it's delicious. Um, and then something that I came up with, actually, we just served it for the first time here in the house and the kids really loved it. Um, it's a uh, salmon scramble. And right. so um, I got this off of the uh, mashupmom.com, which is a website that saves my life when it comes to planning meals. Um, but it's literally um, to feed a family of four, it was like eight eggs. And then you go by, you know, those like um, slabs of smoked salmon that are like the locks or whatever that you like mm-hmm. eat them with like crackers or so you get one of those and you chop it all up. Like you kind of make it really small and then you take like three to four ounces of like cream cheese and, and get that ready. And so what you do is you get the egg scrambled up get it to where it's kind of solid, solid, but also a little liquidy throw in the -hmm. the cream cheese and the salmon Mm -hmm. and get that cooked up real nice. And uh, you can even throw in some like green onions if you want to, whatever. Uh, And then you just serve it and it, Oh my gosh, it's so good. Like the, the smoked salmon just takes over. Um, But the kids really liked it and you can serve it with like bagels and you don't even have to like smear cream cheese on them because that's already in the eggs. So you just like throw it on the bagel and eat it. It's delicious. But yeah, the kids are like, we want that for breakfast too. And I'm like, it works for me. Like that's really easy to make. Like it took me like 30 minutes to put that together. So not a big, not a problem, but yeah, that's kind of what we're doing for, for the morning and then probably just watching the parade, which will be so different this year. <laughs> They've already said that the Macy's Day Parade is going to be so it's, weird. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be, well, you know, and it's just another other thing we're, we're getting used to. You know, it's just a new way of doing things yep. and, you know, maybe it'll help us appreciate it more next year. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I would say that's probably going to be the case for sure. Um but then, of course, after you get all those fun things into eating, you get into the best part, which I consider to be is dessert. <laughs> so many good options for dessert. Oh, man. I, I don't know. Like, so kind of I like going down memory lane. But for me, uh, my grand my grandmother's made amazing desserts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my, my grandmother that passed away um, a little over a year ago, uh, she made like so many pies it was nuts like it reminds me of my mother-in-law like she used to make tons of pies too but she's kind of gotten away from it here just with some other things that have gone on in her life but um yeah like go to my grandmother's house it was like chocolate pie rhubarb pie it was like some sort of like lemon meringue was there uh, cherry yeah. pies apple pies it was just like she just like you know maybe like employed the keebler elf for like an entire week or something <laughs> and made, made pies or something like that but um at our house though my wife is the queen of the pumpkin pie that's that's her thing um makes her own crust and has nice. her own little recipe for for making a pumpkin pie and she can literally take like one can of that like pumpkin whatever it is that they usually use and yeah, she can basically true. like spread that into almost like a pie and a half the way that she does it so and it's a thick pie um but yeah that's that's pretty much our thing is pumpkin pie like my, my daughter for her birthday this year we're like what do you want for a birthday cake 
I want pumpkin pie. Like that's what she asked for. So All you get right. an idea, you get an idea of, of, of where that sets in the family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. That's good. Yeah. We're just doing, we're probably just going to, I honestly, I'm going to buy a, a sweet potato pie or two and then some uh, whipped cream and ice cream. I'm not, um, I'm not big on dessert. Cause honestly, we, we, I have so much food on the table. If you're still hungry, well, good luck, you know, but we'll have hot chocolate, which is a big thing, okay. especially here in Georgia, because we don't need anything hot yet. It's still 75 degrees. I was going to be day, like, so. what are you doing drinking yeah. hot chocolate oh, in Georgia? Oh, it's <laughs> awful, but, but they love it. So it's, it's kind of like more like warm chocolate, you know, um, you it just set even, it outside and let it warm yeah, up. Right. Yeah. It won't even <laughs> melt the mushroom. I mean, not mushrooms. I'm sorry. It won't even melt the marshmallows. You put them in there and they just kind of sit there like, Oh, this is kind of tepid. This is great. Uh, but the kids love it and it's just, they will ask for it every single day if they could. Um, okay. Yeah, I can, yeah, we can do hot chocolate. That's no problem. Um, <laughs> I'm good, but, uh, that'll probably be after the, after the meal with the dessert, but who knows that may be with breakfast too. Cause I want to have hyped up kids all day long. So, uh, yeah, that's the other part too. It's like for, for my kids, it's like, all right, like, can I get them down for a nap? Can I make them tired enough to just have them pass out? Like while watching a, uh, a movie or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It just all depends. But yeah, I mean, it, it so, so it sounds like we've got some pretty, both of us have got some pretty uh, cool ideas mm-hmm. for things. Um, I know that I'll probably be going and buying some like specialty beers and getting some, some couple bottles of wine for my wife and whatever to share. And um, the other thing that we got into that's really tasty is uh, dates. Oh, really? and, yeah um so we found this to be something that is really cheap to do at like aldi um you can get like a, a container of of dates and uh you cut the seed out of them and then you fill it with honey goat cheese and it is delicious right. it's so huh. good um and then we were playing around one day where i was cooking dinner and i was making bacon and we were wrapping them in bacon <laughs> gosh this yeah. leveled it up to a whole new thing yeah, you can't go wrong wrapping it in bacon yeah so that's that's a fun little just like you know fun little appetizer to have on the side but yeah i mean it's gonna be it's gonna be for us i don't think it'll be too weird other than the fact of the kids and us we're looking forward to seeing you know the, the relatives and stuff but it's just not it's just not um it's not something that's going to happen this year. And so I think we've kind of come to terms with that and we're just making it as fun as we can with, for the kids. And, you know, they've had their moments where they ask, you know, like, are we going? And it's like, no, we're not. And they're like, okay. And then like a few days later they ask again and like, all right, this this is just going to be a constant thing until it comes and goes. So, and I I think that's going to be the way with a lot of the families. I mean, and I, I, I think for a lot of, a lot of us, it's just going to be a constant like, hey, like it's going to be okay. We're going to have a good time. And I think reassuring your kids that it's going to be fun and we're going to make it fun. And, you know, however that looks like that's the biggest thing, like just reassuring your kids. And then too, like if you yourself are feeling glum about it, like reaching out to other uh, other dads and talking to them, I think is a big part. Like I was thinking about this, um, you know, on NPR, they have on the day of Thanksgiving, like a call in where you call in and you talk to people about like how you make the turkey and ask all these different questions. Have you ever heard that before? No, no, I haven't. No. So it's this really neat show where basically they, people call in and they have questions about how do you make this or how do you make that? Or like, I've heard this, is, you know, it's just like all this stuff. And so it's, it's just like this show where they're trying to help people out. And I, I thought about it from this standpoint, it's like on Thanksgiving, there are going to be folks who are just going to be like, I don't know if I can make it through this day. Like, this is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot missing out. And the thing that I think I want people to um, basically really grab onto is the idea of just because it's Thanksgiving doesn't mean that you have to sit in silence in your uh, emotions of things, but to reach out to other people. Like, yes, are we with our families? Of course we are. But are we willing to take time to hear other people and, and you know, be there for them? Like, I, I think a lot of folks would be. 
honestly, if someone texted me or called me and said, I really need to like, just talk to somebody right now. Like I know my, yeah. my, my wife would be like, go, go take five, 10 minutes and, and talk to them, give them a chance to, to, you know, get some things off their chest. Um, and so I, I just really want to stress that to anybody listening that if it's going to, if it's going to be a tough day for you, like, find that person and reach out to them and, and share with them what's going, you know, what's, what you're going through and and get that off your chest. And hopefully that will lighten things up for you to where you can at least enjoy the day and give thanks for the things that, you know, you're grateful for. Um, So that's, that's my, I guess we can call it like the, my action step for anybody that's listening to this at this point. (laughs) But yeah. I don't know. You got anything that, uh, anything along those lines for any of the listeners? Well, I think anybody that knows me knows that I am all about all of my emotions, um, whatever they may, I may be, you know, there's a, a time and a place for everything, of course, but, uh, I have no problem and really have never had a problem talking about the things that I like, the things that I love, the things that I dislike. And when it comes to Thanksgiving, there's so much that can be involved in it. And because there are so many family traditions, mm-hmm. um, this year and really every year, you're making your family traditions. Each yep. person, each parent, each family is deciding what their family traditions are going to be or not going to be. And if there's something you really, you know, we, well, we have to make, you know, cranberry cobbler or whatever thing that you have that's been in the family for 30 years, you don't. And, you know, if it's it's your kids don't like it or you don't like it, that's fine. Or if you want to do your Thanksgiving differently, um, we've talked about some great examples tonight, you know, what you're doing. Um, you go with what your kids want. You go with what your family wants. And that can change, of course, you know, 10 years from now, I'm likely not going to be, you know, cooking this huge meal. Um, and on the other side, you probably will be, you know, because your kids will be in the, in the, in their teens and be that time. Oh yeah. Can I have two turkeys and 80,000 rolls, you know, but, but make it your own. And everything that we do, I think this month for me is revolved around it being November and having that thought of men's health in so many facets and so many ways that we kind of forget about or neglect sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'm very thankful that I'm growing up <laughs> if I could say that, in a world where it's becoming very, very okay to talk about how you're feeling um, and to be able to help other people say, you know, well, you're having a, you know, what's going on? What's doing it? You know, it seems like a small thing to me, but if it's a big thing to you, that's what's important, you know, Um, being able to support your friends. And especially, I will We'll say with at home dads, we have just a natural kind of insulated. Uh, it's just me and my kids all day for the next 300 years. Um, and, and the community's there for you. And, and I think it's very good that you pointed it out. You know, if you need somebody, you just call somebody and say, hey, you know, I, I just need five, 10 minutes. Um, I burned the turkey. I'm, I'm wrecked. You know, Thanksgiving's done. I don't know what to do now. And of course, it's you in that moment. Um, it's where we are when we hit that, oh, I failed. I got to do this thing. Oh my goodness. What did I do to the Turkey? Um, Thanksgiving's not ruined. And, you know, Thanksgiving's about being thankful and being with family. Even if that means grandma and grandpa, don't get to see you that year, you know, it's okay. So I think that's my, my focus on it this year. And for all of the people, all the dads that I know that, that hopefully they can take that away from the, from this as well, is it make it what you want it to be and, if you need help, ask. That's great. I think that's a that's definitely the nail uh, for the for the episode. Honestly, I, I think that we we've covered a lot of good stuff, and uh, I hope that everybody listening has a great Thanksgiving, a very happy Thanksgiving. Um, I'm very grateful for everybody that um, I've come into contact with this past year online, and just the conversations that um, that I've gotten to have and um, you know, just, yeah, I'm grateful really am for everything. And so, um, I hope everybody listening, uh, you get time to enjoy with your family and share with us what you guys are doing, you know, like, um, I'm sure that a lot of people will within the closed group and stuff, but, um, you know, feel free to leave us messages on uh, anchor FM as well and, and let us know what's going on. But, um, yeah, thanks for joining us for this show. And, uh, I hope that you got something out of it and, uh, we will uh, talk to you very soon on a coming up episode. Have a good night. I'm a dad. That's what I do.